So these are sections from a uh, serial poem called Remains. The opening remarks came decades later. This is a piecemeal offering. I would, sit I would sit next to you if I could, but we've yet to select a place for the affair to end. We know there's no thirst without memory. So you fasten your belt. We head to the cemetery on a bright afternoon. Tulip gardens patch the hills. Young couples pass the time by renaming the kinds of rubble. Instead of loss, they have dream. There's no heartbreak. For the length of a cobbled day, whatever they see in each other's gaze drips from the buildings as music. As for the question of what can't be retrieved from the tangles of interaction, as for standing on a drawbridge above a dry riverbed overlooking downtown, I mean the reasons we hesitated to make contact while all the ways we could fail or succeed passed through us like rays illuminating rooms only we could see. Noticing a bird landing on a wet branch allowed as a means of buying ourselves some time. As for the walk back to the car, as for the heady cages that sat at the bottom of us breaking, getting caught in the sand with our clothes off, never, with the voices from the street making their circles in the rain crossed our minds. All of the outcomes we had kept in orbit started coming down, one after one after one in a hail. No more standing in a circle, no more birds of paradise, no steel frames, no rules na nailed to the doors, no more doors, no more waiting for the right grip to raise the wrench, no dogs, no cats, no dragonflies, no elk, no sleepless sharks floating quiet in dark waters, no more golden feminine laughter, no elders, no clear skies, no wasted hunger, no more cleansing rain, no flower beds, no rails, no stems, no proper names, no safety words, no walls, no more childhood ponds, no dining by the shore while the ships wave, no more blinking, no more passing cars, no more wine, no more music left in the caves we tagged with spray paint, no bread, no roads, no standing castles, no close listeners of echoes, no more comfortable songs. From steel rooms, we kept the cities optimized and hanging from the skies. In the hot evenings of September, I sat in bed with my back against the window, the music from the basement feeding the walls. Our ceiling is white and peeling. Each year, we grow more attached to the things we think we've earned. The day and night sound of the cars fades in and out of earshot. And we're standing on concrete waiting for a signal to appear before our eyes, the sudden slowing down of a random moment making us see, people getting up and leaving, some of us at tables studying our accidents, parts of our lives beginning to resemble paper boats. I had a kid-sized version of my father's rocking chair and wide open days that I spent tearing off flakes of shale from the cliff next to our house. I tricycled down slopes, I scraped my arms and was chased by street dogs for having thrown flakes of shale at them, thinking but not having the words to speak of the feeling of smallness. The Earth's architecture seemed to care nothing for ours. I've almost forgotten it now, as we exit into the morning on cold days. We exhale and stare at our breath. We go for the car keys and try out a line from a good movie to test its ring. I have been dead for years, we say but so much of me still lives in the places where I stopped to look around. If you enjoyed the pipe dream, you might also like old rumpled sheet music. If you enjoyed the heavy air of your childhood farm, you might also like these haunted castles full of ivy. If you are lost in the forest, this tiny bell will keep your memories until you find inner peace and no longer need them. If you liked the slow sex of winter, you will love these dead flags flapping in the sunset. If the roar of the last few tigers kept you awake, you might enjoy this new coat of red feathers. If you keep falling through the floor during your sleep, 
It might be the perfect time to count your losses and learn their names. If you enjoyed the splatter effects of our latest war, you may take a stranger's hand and step outside. Spring would catch us. It would see us trying so hard to cry like animals. It would surround us with curious plants that could feed on our leftovers when the time came. In the clearing provided, we could kneel and disgorge ourselves over and over, and out of our entrails would come the smell of our neighbors, beside it the stench of blood, processed meals, bits of dream. If we could learn to cry like that, each time we flung the door of a new house open, perhaps we could remember all the things gone in precise detail without trying. It might surprise us how much the moment we both stood in our boats looking up at the bridges at night could unhinge us. Thank you.